Welcome back. We are to uh, chapter 11, part two, contingency tables. And let's start off by what we mean by that, a contingency table. This is a table consisting of frequency counts of categorical data corresponding to two different variables. And we'll see lots of examples of that by the end of this video. And the next definition is in a test of independence, we test the null hypothesis uh, that is in a contingency table. The row and column variables are independent. Uh, so we're going to conduct a test for independence between the row variable and the column variable. So this is a test to see if they're independent. Requirements are that the sample data are randomly selected. The sample data are represented as frequency counts in a two-way table, and E is at least five. Our null hypothesis is that the row and table variables are independent, and the alternative is uh, that they are dependent on one another. Our test statistic, it's the same um, as with uh, the, the previous lesson, but calculating E is much more complicated. The row total times the column total divided by the, the grand total. And I'll explain what all that means here in a second. The degrees of freedom are going to be uh, the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. And we have some, and they're always right tailed, uh, just, like, uh, just like before. All right. O represents the observed frequency in a cell, it's the O. E represents the expected frequency in a cell. Little r is the number of rows, and little c is another number of columns. And let's jump into an example. So this is a study of success with different treatments of, uh, for a stress fracture. So these are the different ways that you can deal with a stress fracture and whether they were successful or not. So we want to see if this has any bearing with this, with the success or failure. And we're going to be using a chi-squared uh, piece here. And so let's start with our, our null hypothesis. Actually, I'm going to leave this for the graph. Let's do the null hypothesis down here. The null hypothesis is success is independent of the treatment. Our alternative is that success is, is dependent. The treatment. And this is going to be a chi squared. Your chi squared always start at zero. Squared. And we are testing this at the 5%. Let's find a critical region here. And we could find the critical value, but we really don't need to. Let's find the degrees of freedom real quick. If you remember, it was the number of rows, one, two, three, four, minus one. So degrees of freedom is going to be four minus one times two minus one. So that's going to be degrees of freedom of three. All right, so let's find our E here for a second. And then we'll find our, um, our test statistics. So I want to go through an iteration and show you how to find E. So here we are. And I'm going to find the row totals. So 54 plus 12. Oh, what color? So 66. 41 plus 51 is 92. 70 plus three is 73, and 17 plus five is 22. Let's do the same with the columns. So 54 plus 
41 plus 70 plus 17. So 182. And then we have 12 plus 51 plus 3 plus 5. 70. And let's add everything up. 182 plus 71 is 253. So the total is 253. You know what, let's add up these as well. We should be getting the same thing. So 66 plus 92 plus 73 plus 22. There it is. So we are going to do an E. If you remember, the formula is here. Row total, column total, divided by the grand total. So we're gonna find our E sub one, one. And what that's, that's gonna mean is that is row one, column one. So here is gonna be our expected outcome. So it's gonna be the row total, 182, times the column total, 66, divided by the grand total. 253. So 182 times 66 divided by 253. So 47.478. Now we could keep, and we would have to do that for all eight of these. We'd have to have uh, E sub uh, 2, 1 would be for this one here. That's so why I would take that number times that number divided by that number and so on. However, I want to show you our Machine does it for us. Remember that number, 47.478. So what I did was I, I'm going to be using the matrix function here. Matrix is right above um, inverse x, or x to the negative first power. So I'm going to hit second in matrix. And I'm going to edit matrix A. And you can see I've put the, the data already in here, 54, 41, 17, 17, and so on. You'll have to uh, make it a four by two. It's always rows by columns. So there's four rows and two columns. So you'll have to dimension your, your, your calculator. All right, and watch this. So I'm gonna quit out of that. I'm gonna go to stat, to the tests. And I'm gonna go to the chi-squared test. All of the calculators should have this one. And observed. That's this data here is already in matrix A for me. Matrix B, it's gonna calculate all eight of those for me. How cool is that? And they're gonna dump it into matrix B and you can change those if you need to. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate that out. So this gives us our test statistic. In this case is 58.393, oops, it's chi squared, a p value. Now I want to show you this number again. By the way, notice the degrees of freedom of three, as I mentioned. Now this looks like 1.295 and so on, times 10 to the negative 12. That means I have to move that decimal 12 places. So there's going to be an 11 zeros and then one and so on. So the p-value in this case is about zero, which is way less than, I forgot to mark it. That was here, 0 0.05. This is clearly less than 0 0.05. So the conclusion that we're gonna to come to is that uh, we're gonna reject the null hypothesis. Reject null hypothesis. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that uh, there, there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. Success is dependent 
treatment. Meaning that the treatment, surgery, or the, the weight-bearing cast, all that stuff, um, whether it's successful or, or not, does depend on the method used. Kind of cool stuff. Let's do another one. Oh, I didn't show you the coolest feature of all. Do you remember this number here, 47.478 and so on? If we go to matrix B, and take a look. Look at that, 47.478 it calculates all of those for you. So when we were doing this, for all eight of these, which rightfully we didn't have to do, this does all of that for you, which I think rocks. I think that's so cool. All right, next up. Results from a civil servant exam are shown in the table below. Is there sufficient evidence to support the claim that the results from the test are discriminatory? discriminatory? Uh, use a 0 0.01 significance level. So let's go, I'm gonna go to edit, and this is gonna be a two by two. Two by two, 15, 15, 10, 28. And before we do all this, let us figure out the null hypothesis. Points and minority candidates. Have the same chance to pass. Whites and minority candidates do not have. have the same chance to pass. I know these uh, known alternative hypotheses are quite long, but that's okay. So let's take a look at what's going on here. And they want to use 0 0.01 significance level. Once again, this is a chi-squared graph. Here we start at zero. And we are going to come up with our test statistic in key value. So let's run that. I already put mine into matrix A. Stat tests. I'm going to go up to the bottom of the list and up to chi-squared test. So the observed are the these here. Expected are going to be dumped into matrix B. Calculate. Uh, notice the degrees of freedom are one. That's because it's a two by two, and two minus one is one. So one times one is one. That's where they got that from. So it looks like I got our test statistic. I squared is about 4.045. But what we can really care about is the p-value. That is going to be 0 0.0443. And we can say that that is definitely less than, uh, bigger than 0 0.01, pardon me, I was thinking it was 0.05, but it's, so this is definitely bigger than 0 0.01. So we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. All right, so there is not sufficient evidence.
Zero differences. Differences. Hmm. Not too bad. Um, I didn't write it down, but I should. So just to be clear, this is called a chi-squared test in your calculator. And you'll need to use your matrices. All right. Moving on. The table below summarizes data from a survey of a sample of women using 0 0.05 significance level and assuming that the sample sizes, size of 700 men and 400 women are predetermined, test the claim that the proportions of agree disagree response um, are the same for subjects interviewed by both men and the subject interviewed by, by women. Does it appear that, it, that the gender of the interviewer affected the responses of women. All right, so we're to the last part here. So let's get our null hypothesis. Proportions. Are the same. All right, so let's see what we got here. And we are doing this at 0 0.05. Alpha. This is zero. <laughs> this is our chi squared. All right, so let's, this is gonna be another two by two. So I'm gonna to go to matrix again, recall, second matrix, I'm going to edit A. The dimensions are the same, so two by two. Information in there, so 461, 318, 239, and 82. All right, let's run our test. I squared test. There we go. Twenty-two point nine two five five p value. Once again, that's times ten to the negative sixth. So I'll exaggerate this. So one, two, three, four, five, one, six, eight. You can see that that is way less than five percent. We are going to reject the null hypothesis. There is not. But there is, pardon me, there is sufficient evidence. that the proportions are different. Uh, 
Not too bad. Pretty easy with the calculator, I'd say. <laughs>